Greetings friends! Today we are going to start an exciting project to create our own QR code generator using Python programming and the TK interlibrary. Before we start coding, let me share with you the idea behind this project. QR codes are a fast and familiar way to transfer information. It is used in various fields, in advertising, marketing. It ensures that the user quickly follows the image to the desired resource. But how do you create a QR code? And how do you write a program that creates QR codes? In this video, we will not only answer these questions, but also learn how to create simple windowed applications. We will master the basics of the TK Inter library. Together with TK Inter, we will master another library, TTK Bootstrap. This module allows you to improve the look of our TK Inter applications, making them not only functional, but also giving them a nice modern interface. Let's start by creating and activating a virtual environment and install all the necessary libraries into it. We need a library called QR code, also a pillow for working with images, since we will be storing the QR code in an image format. And you also need to install an add-on to the TK Inter library, the TK Bootstrap library, to have styles in our lives. Let's start by importing the tkinter library. This will allow us to use all the functions and classes that tkinter provides. Then we will create a QR code class. This class will be the class of our application. First, for the very beginning of work, we will write the standard constructor of the init class. And then we need to create one more property for the QR code class. This is the root. This is the main window. Let's write self root equal to root. And in general, the first version of our class is ready. Now let's write the if name equals main. This is a conditional statement that ensures that the code inside will be executed only when the script is run directly and not imported as a module into another script. Now, on the next line, let's create the main window of the program. Root equals ticket tk. There's just one small thing. We imported ticket.inter directly. Let's import it under a slightly different name, namely tk. So we don't have to write tk.inter every time and just use tk. Next, an instance of the QR code class is created in which the main root window is passed. Next, write root main loop. This command starts the main loop of ticket inter. The main loop is responsible for processing events such as button presses or text output or supports GUI display on the screen. This loop will run until the window is closed. This code snippet is already enough for us to have a window. And this code will not change much from one program to another. The only thing that will change is the name of the class. It will no longer be a QR code. Now let's customize our window a bit. Add some more features, such as size and title. This is also quite simple. We turn to our self.root window. Dot and title to set the title. And in the brackets, we write the title itself. And now, if you run the program and expand our window, we will see that this title has been successfully added. Now, so that we don't have to manually expand the window in the future, let's set some specific dimensions for our window. Self root geometry. And we pass the size in quotes. For example, Four hundred x thousand. We see that four hundred is horizontal and a thousand is vertical. Let's change it a little bit. Okay, but I think we need to make the QR code fit in the future. It should be a square window. Let's get acquainted with the first widget that we will place on our window. Let's make it at least a simple inscription. But first of all, we still need to import it from the TK Inter module. 
By importing TTK, we will already have all the live we need available. And then we write the following code with the text we need. But at this stage, if you run our program, our widget will not be displayed yet. You see, the window is empty. That's because we've created the widget itself, but we still need to tell Python where to place it. So we go to our widget, to its pack, and specify where we want to place it. In our case, we place it at the Y coordinate. And if we also place subsequent views in the same way along the Y coordinate, then they will be under each other. In this video, we will not talk in detail about how to place the TK inter in TK inter. If you want to hear more about it, I can make a separate video, but be sure to write about it in the comments. Well, we also need a field where we will enter the link from which the QR code itself will be made. Therefore, we create another widget called entry. Also, for this spin, you must specify the width of our field. As you can see, our view has been successfully created under the previous one. This is due to the fact that we also placed it on the Y coordinate, passing as a parameter, padded to the level of 10. Now let's create another button in the same way, after which we will create the QR code itself. There is nothing complicated in creating a button. It is created very similar to a label, only now we call the button class. We also pass the window on which we will place it, and we also pass the text that will be on this button. And then, of course, we just need to place this button. So far our button will not do anything, but later we will program actions for this button. In order to do this, we need to create a method for our class. Let's name the method generate QR code. Although for now, it will perform a much simpler action. Let's get the text from our text box. And print it. Now, if you click on the button, nothing changes so far. That's because we haven't yet bound our class method to the button. To do this, let's go to our button and write a command. <laughs> Through self, of course, since this is a class method. Now, when we enter text in our field and click on the button, as you can see, this text is printed to the terminal. What does this mean? It means that we can use that text and work with it. That we receive from the user. And this is what we need to make a code from a link. The link again is entered by the user. Now let's improve our program to protect it from errors. Since again, the QR code is made from some text, we need to handle the error that sometimes The user will click on the button to make a QR code when the text box is still empty. That's why we imported message box recently and now we are writing the following language. If input text is empty, then we call this message box. From this, we select the box with the warning. And here we have to show the title for this message box. And we also have to specify the text for this message box. Now, if we click the button and our text box is empty, we get a warning. Now, in general, our program is ready. At least, its framework is ready. Now, what we need to do is figure out how to make a QR code out of the text. Let's create a file in which we'll play with the library that will generate this QR code. We import the QR code and we also import the pilo so that we can save and edit this image later. 
Let's ask the user to enter some string. However, in this script we will ask them to simply enter this string into the terminal to make a QR code from it. Let's write a function that will generate our QR code. Def, let's come up with some short and simple name. And as a parameter, it will accept exactly the string that half the user is using. First of all, let's write here the creation of a new QR code object. And yes, let's specify the version. Version to level 1. This is a parameter that determines the size of the QR code from 1 to 40, where 1 is the smallest QR code, since we don't really need a large one. Next is error correction. The one we are going to specify now is the error correction level. The one we specify means that you can correct up to 7% of the accelerated or corrupted characters. This is necessary so that even if the link is slightly incorrect, we can make a really good working QR code. And then we need to specify the box size. This is the size of each box or square in the QR code. And besides that, let's set up the border. We'll set the border to level 4. In general, that's it. Now let's finally add the data that the user entered as a URL to the QR code. And now let's finally introduce this command. It will generate the structure of the QR code and the fit our true parameter means that the QR code size will be adjusted automatically to fit all the data. Now we have very little left to do and some standard actions. We need to create a QR code image with a black square on a white background. Next, we need to set the image size. We will set it to 200 by 200 pixels in the future. And in fact, all that remains is to save the image. And after we write this code and run it, we'll enter some text. We will have a ready-made QR code in our folder. Now let's finally transfer this logic to our method that will generate this QR code. And so, let's import all the necessary libraries. From the PL library, we need to import the class image and class image TK. And we also need to import the QR code library. And so, let's start transferring this logic already. And yes, note that if the user has not entered anything then we're going to show them a window, a message that you have not entered anything, and end the return function. And then in the LC script, we have to create this object of the QR code class and finally create the QR code itself. And so we basically just transferred the code from the previous module with minor changes, and now we have to create an object of the image TK class. This is the image that we need for the tkinter rendering, so that we can then transfer this image to the label. We pass the object of our image. And now we're going to address our label directly to bind the newly created image of our QR code to our label. This is done in general easily. We only need a couple of lines of code for this. And now finally, when we launch our app and we enter some text in there or some specific link, we get a nice QR code generated that will lead us to that link. For example, as in my case, this link and this QR code will lead to the codefinity.com website. Now let's improve the visual appearance of our program a little bit by adding styles from the Tika Bootstrap library. Let's import the style class from this library. Create the corresponding property in our class. And now, after that, let's specify a specific style. I'll specify this one. You can pick up any other styles from the documentation. There are not so many of them in general. 
you can familiarize yourself with them and choose the one you like. Now, if we launch our program, we can see that the color of our elements has changed to dark. Let's, for example, edit our program a little bit more. For example, repaint a button in a slightly different style just to see what else this library is capable of. But again, the library is very simple. It has a lot of interesting styles and you can easily, with these basic skills and the official documentation at hand, transform your tech interface application into a more beautiful one thanks to Titke Bootstrap.